Conclude, I open the floor for question. If you ask me one of the better books of Sirah, I will say that the book of uh, somebody who I had the great honor to study with and my sheikh and my teacher, Sheikh Safir Rahman Mubarak Furi, has written Ar-Rahiq Al-Makhtoum. And this book has a story, and I just want to mention the story, and I encourage you to buy it. In 1979, WAMI, the World Assembly of Muslim Youth, Rabit Al-Alam Islamiyya, one of the largest bodies of Islamic uh, scholarship and academics, made an announcement that they want a worldwide competition in books of Sirah. They wanted to have a competition to see which book of Sirah could be written that was suitable for the modern place and times. And so they made a competition that the entire world is, can contribute, anybody can contribute a new book in Sirah and they would choose the best one. And so over 400 books were written in that one year. Because the grand prize was uh, $100,000, I think, which for the time was quite a lot of money. And so a lot of researchers said, oh, this is a good thing for us, good incentive, let's, uh, let's try to do this. And so out of these you know, 400 books or so, which were written in multiple languages, uh, the book that won first prize was the book of, alhamdulillah, the Sheikh Safi Rahman, uh, my Sheikh, and it was called Ar-Rahiq Al-Makhtoum, which is the sealed nectar, Ar-Rahiq Al-Makhtoum. And it is a book that... It's a very simple, very easy to follow, very beautiful book. It's a very good book. It does the job of the Sirah in a very professional and academic manner. Unfortunately, the English translation is just terrible. It's just completely terrible. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, it's really bad. The Urdu I've heard is very good. Now, the Sheikh was Indian, alhamdulillah. <laughs> I have some bias here, alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, the Sheikh was Indian, so he could read Urdu. So he uh, approved the Urdu. He wrote it in Arabic. He's an Indian, he wrote it, he never stepped foot in Arabia. And he wrote it in Azamgarh, a small village. A small village, right? He told me the story that he said he literally locked himself up in his library for four months. Just going out to eat and to go to the bathroom. That's all he went. For four months he locked himself up and he wrote this book, Ar-Rahiq Al-Makhtoum, in very beautiful Arabic. I was really shocked that his Arabic was so strong, even though he was not, uh, uh, had never lived there. And it won first prize and it's a very good book in Arabic. It's also a very good book in English and Urdu from what I've been told. The Arabic, uh, the English translation is really quite weak. Whoever translated it was not fluent in English. So anybody who reads it in English understand that the style is much better. But you get the facts. You get the facts in, in English. So my encouragement to you, if you want something, that you buy ar rahiq Al-Makhtoum. And there's another good book that has some major issues. We're going to talk about those, but Martin Ling's book. Martin Ling's book. Uh, which is basically called the, uh, the life of the Prophet right? The life of Muhammad uh, Martin Ling's book is the most eloquent book of Sirah in English. And that's not surprising because Martin Ling's was a professor at Oxford on Shakespeare. And he's a convert to Islam. He converted to Islam. So he was a Shakespearean alim at Oxford. It's an alim, what's so funny, he's an alim. An alim means he's a scholar, right? He's an alim of Shakespeare, yes. So, he's a Shakespearean alim, and he converted to Islam back in the 60s. Uh, and he lived a very quiet life. He, didn't, he wasn't a very public person. He was a very intellectual, just kept to himself. Uh, and he wrote a book of Sirah, the English of which cannot be compared to any other book, because this is, he is a master of English. There's only one problem with the book, and that is there's two or three stories in there that really should not be in there. It's not his fault, he didn't invent those stories, but he's not a researcher, he's not a scholar. And so he just took some stories that he didn't really think about, are they critical or not, and he put them in there. And so this is the problem of that book, that there's just really two, three stories that are just out downright wrong and and they can use some fuel and fodder for non-muslims to to say things about our religion he wrote it at a time and place where islam was not under attack he didn't really think through he just is innocent man and he wasn't a scholar in that sense he was a shakespeare alim not a hadith alim so this is the problem but i do encourage you to own the book and to read it uh, and if you do then you can download as well just uh, do a google of you know the problems of uh, martin lings and you'll find a pdf or a, a file which mentions number of stories that are dangerous let's say or incorrect so the love story let's say the process and fell into love with zainab we're going to get to that someday inshallah this is just not true it's a complete fabrication 
And I gave in a talk at Yale about this issue. It's a complete fabrication. There was no love story. There was no romance going on. Unfortunately, he put it in there. And he thought it was because he's a Western audience. So for him, romance is a good thing, isn't it? You know, for him, love stories are good stories. So he, he, he thought this is a good story. Let me put it in. But that's not our Prophet system, is it? You know, and so, and so there are other issues like this that academically they're not good to have. Otherwise, the book is superb. So these two books, I think, are books that you should own and, and, uh, and purchase and, and read. And inshallah, as time goes on, we can mention other books.